Hi, everyone. Uh, just give me a sign that you can hear me. Raise your hand right on the chat just so we can tell that uh, everything is working OK. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, so first of all, good morning uh, to some of you. Good afternoon. Good evening. Thank you very much uh, for joining. We appreciate that you're taking the time to be with us. Uh, we know everyone is very busy. Uh, that's why we also don't do these webinars uh, so often because uh, we try to do them only when we have something interesting. Um, we hope uh, that by the end of this webinar, you will have some uh, information uh, and some knowledge that you didn't have in the beginning. And uh, Basically, what we wanted to talk about today is with so many recent changes and updates in the industry, uh, especially in the US and Europe, who are updating their regulations. We thought it's a good time to provide you with an update on where OGI technology is and also where we're going very, very soon. Um, so we'll leave uh, just to give you a heads up. We'll have at the end of this webinar an opportunity to uh, uh, for you to ask questions, and uh, if you can just write them on the chat, we'll try to get to everybody. And uh, if we don't get to you for some reason, we'll review the chats later, and then now uh, you know you can contact us by email as well. So for those of you uh, who don't know Gal, who don't know us, uh, my name is Ilan uh, Ilan Waldman, and I'm the sales director uh, for the OGI uh, product lines. Uh, and with me is uh, Ram Hashmanai, who is our uh, chief scientist, uh, chief innovation scientist. And um, just a little bit about Obgal, for those of you uh, who don't know, there might be some information on this webinar that's a repeat for some of you, uh, but we're trying to uh, also add, we try to add many new things as well. So bear with us and we'll try, try to go through the stuff that you might know. Uh, quickly. So very quickly on Obgal, uh, we're a global leader in uh, cutting edge optical gas imaging solutions. Uh, we're owned and backed by Elbit Systems with over 40 years uh, in uh, proven thermal imaging technology. We've done some changes in our company. I won't get into the changes, uh, but these are uh, good changes for us. Um, the industrial division is becoming a more, a more of a focus. Uh, aspect of the company and we're very excited about it and we're very very excited about where things are going to be not just in the industry but also in our company in the next year two years so we currently offer uh, a, a few field solutions one is our hand hand un, hand sorry hand cooled OGI camera which is the IC gas 2.0 uh, we have an uncooled camera we have the 24 7 fixed solution and we have the Q uh, the QOGI quantification. Some of our customers uh, from the last 10 years as well you can see in this slide we've been selling the product uh, since our first generation camera and we're continuing to grow uh, in a very uh, interesting rate. So very briefly why uh, why use the OGI technology and why are regulators moving towards OGI technology around the world? First of all, because it's very simple. If you see the leak, there is a leak. It's very quick. You can scan a very wide area uh, very quickly with a camera. It's safe. You can stand far away uh, as you require from the area of interest. It's reliable. It's durable. There's no calibration required to the camera. Um, it's very solid. Once uh, once you purchase it, you don't need to send it back for repairs. And it's very user friendly, very easy to learn how to use it. Um, so it doesn't require much training. Okay. For those of you who weren't here in the beginning, uh, here we have Ilan Waldman. Uh, to my left, and uh, me, Ram Hashmanai, Chief Scientist. And before we present to you Obgal's innovation, updates, and future directions, uh, I would like to go in a short uh, introduction to scientific background on optical gas imaging. 
So the OGI equation explains very well. Just a second. OK, the OGI uh, equation explains very well how the OGI technology detects, measures, and uh, quantify gases. Uh, this OGI equation is derived from two-layer uh, radiative transfer equation. And uh, I would like to ask, ask and explain what is OGI technology. So OGI technology is a thermal imaging uh, camera that has a transmission bandpath filter over here, you can see the spectrum of the transmission that is between the lens and the detector. And the transmission spectrum of the filter overlaps the absorption coefficient spectrum of the gas, of the target gas that we are trying to detect or measure. So how does it does it? How the OGI technology, how does the camera detect? It actually measures the radiance contrast between the background at each pixel. At each pixel, we are measuring the radiance, the temporal radiance, uh, when you have gas and when you don't have gas. And the contrast between two, uh, these two situations give us the contrast relative to the delta T. The delta T is the temperature difference between the air and the background. The background temperature and the air uh, where the gas is released into. So we measure the radiance contrast, the relative radiance contrast, and what is it uh, depends on? It really depends on the gas concentration. You can see here that the transmission through the gas plume over here is depends on the gas concentration, the absorption coefficient, and the transmission of the filter. I'm sorry, I. So um, this is how we we get a measure of the contrast and how we eventually know if there is a gas between the background and the camera. The air between the gas plume and the camera may affect when you're trying to measure in long distances. So in short distances, we assume that transmission through the air layer is one, but in longer distances, we cannot assume this assumption. Okay. Okay, I'm trying. Here, this one. OK, so. So. What is a uh, optical gas imaging technology? We have uh, two types. Uh, in general, we have the mid-wave IR cooled cameras that are suitable for um, uh, all VOCs. All VOCs are absorbing between 3.2 to 3.5 micron uh, in wavelength. And, and we have the LWIR, which is a long wave IR that is generally between eight or seven and a half and 12 micron region. And this is an uncooled camera. The difference between cooled and uncooled, it's the sensitivity. So, but also there is a difference on the type of compounds that we measure with these two type of camera. Generally, the mid wave IR, as I said before, is all VOCs. We cannot speciate, but we can detect all of them if they are present between the background target and the camera. The Elwir camera, uh, you can replace filters and have measures. Uh, uh, you can measure methane and, uh, and SF6, ethylene, uh, refrigerants, but all of these are in different type of uh, models, but and uh, in, in much lower sensitivity than the cooled camera. The cooled camera is a very, very sensitive uh, camera for leak detection. So, 
as I showed before, we we are measuring the the transmission through the gas plume times the the transmission of the filter, and this transmission through the gas plume is a function of the concentration and the absorption coefficient of the gas. So if we look at this, uh, this is quite different from what our competitors are doing. We can calibrate for each concentration what will be the response. We call it compound specific response of the camera. So if we calculate this compound uh, response as a function of concentration length of integrated concentration, you can see each gas will have different uh, concentration, res uh, different response to concentration, and we can calibrate this into uh, we measure the compound response by the relative contrast that I mentioned earlier, and we can derive what is the concentration at any specific contrast that we measure in the camera. Uh, I will talk about it later, but other companies using the response factor, which is a relative response to propane. Each compound that we measure is relative to propane, and therefore this is uh, uh, could be problematic if you if you it's not really a measure of the response is not really a measure of sensitivity, but a measure of relative sensitivity to propane. So we we have a way we develop a way to each compound uh, calibrate theoretically to uh, calibrate the CSR to concentration theoretically uh, without uh, re uh, relative uh, measure to another compound, and we tested it in, in our labs uh, comparing to tunable diode lasers that measure methane, and we, as you can see, we are looking at this target with, with the camera and the laser, uh, and we can see every tenth of a second how they respond to the same uh, methane release that comes from this uh, orifice over there. And when we do one second comparison, you can see that the slope is very close to one and the R square is very high. So our calibration of each compound to concentration, our calibration of the measured relative contrast to the uh, concentration is, is very good and, uh, and valid. Okay, sorry. Another great feature that we have, uh, patented feature, we have replaceable, replaceable spectral filters that are a unique feature of the Obgal IC gas 2.0. And in two minutes, we can take off the lens and replace the, uh, the filter. And this is a very, uh, very powerful uh, feature into in two or three uh, levels. One of them, you can see these are three bandpass filters that we can put on the IC gas 2.0 camera. So the blue one here is the transmission of our standard camera. And you can see all the VOCs overlap in this region of this blue filter. The green filter, we call it the long range filter. The, this one is doing better in measuring the heavier alkane like pro, propane, uh, butane, and octane. You can see this absorption, and this is methane. The red one is the methane. Doing slightly less sensitive to methane, but still very sensitive to methane. But the advantage here that the green filter is getting away from the absorption of water vapor. The blue, the light blue color absorption lines are of water vapor. So in short distances, we assume that the transmission through the air is one. We assume that, uh, that the water vapor absorbance is negligible. But as we go to further distances, 10, 50, 500 meters, 
this becomes much more uh, uh, significant and therefore in any long range it's better to use the green filter which is the green filter it's just 0.1 micron to the right to the longer wavelength from the other filter and we can replace it in two minutes and do the measurement in the other filter another filter that we can put is the filter we call the, we can measure co2 these are the orange lines are CO2 absor absorption, and we can we can put uh, a filter in this region, and we can measure CO2 from stacks, from flares, and from other sources of CO2. As you can see, this is on the edge of the uh, detector sensitivity. Therefore, uh, it somewhat uh, compromises sensitivity for CO2, but still, as a lot of useful application to measure CO2 all in one camera. So to summarize this, is we take the example of the exane. Okay, the exane is not very well optimized on the standard filter. It's much better overlapping the long range. So, so all the heavier alkanes like from propane, butane, pentane, up to octane and all the alkanes in between and most of the VOCs, it's better to measure with the green filter, methane a little bit less. But in longer range, all of these compounds are, be, are better because we have the uh, water vapor interfere with the standard filter that most of our competitors use this region, 3.2 to 3.4. <clears throat> Just an example of side by side, we have uh, uh, the same image with two cameras, one with the standard filter to the right and one with the uh, a long range filter to the left. We have a leak from the side of this tank or emission event. You can see the dark that you can hardly see on the standard filter. This is 500 meters. It's like 600 yards away from, from the camera. You can see that there is a better gradient of temperature on the sky. You can see the mountain range that is 10 kilometer away. And the details on the long range with the standard filter are much less. This is summer day, uh, uh, summer day and very humid day. So it uh, can affect the humidity, can affect very much the, the thermal image. So this is just an example of long range when we used. Uh, what should I do? Mm -hmm. This is a rig ten from the shore, uh, ten uh, ten kilometer away from the from the rig. We using the long range filter. This is all day. It's moving very fast. This is a planned uh, venting on this flare, unleaded flare. Uh, it was uh, permitted and we follow this all day long. And uh, I will not go into details, but this is very far away. People ask us how far you can go with OGI. This is an example. This is an example of you can go very far. It dep just depends on the conditions and, and, and the size of the leak. So this is an example you can see in a second how big it, this is a very large leak, so we can see it very well. Uh, okay, this is uh, after four, this is winter, and when it's 1645, you'll see in a second, when uh, sunset and, uh, and dusk happens, this plume will turn into a black plume because mm -hmm. of the temperature difference change, and mm -hmm. at five, it will be done. I'll, I'll let you, you can see in a second, it's still white. You can see this is sunset and now it turned into black. The black plume means that this is now an emission plume, not an absorption plume, but you can see, you can see the plume very far away and you can go very far away from the flare and see it moving downwind. So this answer the many questions that people ask how far you can go with OGR. The answer, it depends. OK, I'll, I'll go to the next one. So uh, the US EPA is in the process of uh, 
uh, getting out a rule in the upstream and the midstream new rules and and in these new rules, they require to use OGI in the Eldar inspection. I will not get into the details of this, but they, the EPA developed a protocol how to use OGI. When they uh, require to use OGI, uh, they will they needed to get into how to use the OGI, and they developed a protocol. It's called Appendix K, and uh, it's now open for. Uh, uh, comments and I think it's a last round of comments before it will be finalized. So uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about a gal perspective on the new rule. And uh, there are two topics that we feel is very important. One of them, uh, and they are both uh, concern the entry barrier of the OGI technology to be used in this uh, OGI inspection service. Uh, we, we feel that one of them, the response factor criteria, criterion, is not, uh, as I explained earlier, response factor is, is not a measure of sensitivity, it's a measure of a relative sensitivity for propane. So, uh, we feel it's not suitable for, as a requirement and the requirement that they they say in general that they need to be response factor of 0.25 and te at 10,000 ppm meter. This is a required uh, requirement as it's written in the protocol, in the appendix po uh, point protocols. And all I wanted to say about it, that every compound, every VOCs, every alkanes, every alkene, every BTEX compound that is in this region of the Emir camera and all OGI camera under this will be Emir camera because th these are the only region, this is the only region that you can measure the, the major compound. This is rules for the oil and gas industry. So all of these compounds have a larger than 0.25. So EPA wrote a protocol how to measure this and there is no point of measuring because I can show for any compound, alkenes, alkanes, and, and BTEX compounds, all of them at 10,000 ppm as larger than 0.25. So what is the point to do the measurement and have a protocol how to do the measurement when you can calculate it and all camera will pass this. So this is a uh, unnecessary requirement especially when it doesn't measure sensitivity. They say it needs to have a sensitivity of 0.25. It's not a sensitivity, it's a relative sensitivity to propane. So if you measure better propane in your camera, you can get a ratio that is lower just because you measure better propane. So it's not a measure of sensitivity and it shouldn't be a requirement as an entry requirement for these OGI cameras. The other thing, the other requirement, they 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 have initial requirement criterion that uh, the OGI needs to uh, be capable of measuring 17 gram per hour of methane, 18 gram per hour of propane, and 5 gram per hour of butane in in a set of condition of five degrees delta T of five wind speed lower than one meter per second and and uh, distance of two meters. So these are the requirement. Most OGI cool camera can measure 50 to 100 times better than this requirement in this condition. I, I can show you in this graph, this is for butane and pentane. You can see, we can see below 0.1 gram per hour. I remind you the 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 requirement is five to eighteen gram per hour uh, at five degrees and at one at two meters and and uh, calm winds less than one meter per second. So this is essentially too loose of a requirement, and many cameras that will uh, will meet this requirement will be able to do this release, but the envelope of operation for these cameras that hardly make this requirement 
will be very small. If you have winds that uh, is more than one meter per second, or you need to measure at longer distance, or the delta T is lower than five, you cannot be you cannot go out and do your survey with this camera. So I, we propose to EPA we in our comments to to have uh, two degrees delta T or maybe four meter per second for these levels of uh, detection. Uh, Yilam? OK, so now that Ram discussed uh, a little bit on the scientific part, let's get to the products and some of the updates that we've uh, that we've added recently. Uh, for some of you, this is a repeat, but uh, there will be some updates as well. So this is generally uh, the general information about our IC gas uh, 2.0. So this is our cooled OGI camera. The IC gas 2.0, Ram mentioned before the difference between cooled and uncooled. One of them is uh, the limitations of the uncooled camera and the amount of compounds which is you, you can detect. The IC gas 2.0 can detect over 400 VOCs uh, and methane. We've got the patent uh, replaceable filter that Ram spoke about and uh, sensitivity. Um, it's the most sensitive camera in the market. We can detect 0 0.35 grams per an hour. I saw that we'll get to the questions at the end. I saw that this is one of the questions. Uh, you're mentioning that in Europe, the, the, the requirement is 17 grams. So we can detect 0 0.35 grams per an hour. It's EPA quite a way compliant, intrinsically safe, internal GPS. Uh, one of the nicest features I think of the camera is the, the ability to stream uh, wirelessly and the integrations to third party products such as uh, TVA 2020, RMLD or any other third party product uh, that you're using, we're able to integrate into the camera. So one of uh, one one of the additions that we've added before I get into the real wear, um, we update the firmware of the camera. So think of it like uh, App Store up, update to applications and so on. Once a year, we send out a firmware upgrade. We work with our customers, we get their feedback, and then we'll update the firmware and add features that uh, they let us know that they require or we think uh, that we need to add. So some of the things that we recently added was um, we added a few more color modes for improved algorithm uh, and better detection. We've added uh, for thermography a manual temperature adjustment as well. Uh, and recently we've added the ability to collect data for QOGI. So these are just a few things that we've added this year to the already existing cameras. Anyone that owns a camera, they'll, will, they'll receive these updates for free. Uh, and like I said, we add them about every six months uh, and sometimes twice a year. One of the things that we've added now with the ability to stream uh, the camera and integrate the camera to third parties is this uh, assisted reality, which is an actually an eyepiece that connects to the IC gas 2.0. And you can uh, live stream the camera to the eyepiece and give commands to the camera uh, with your voice. So just like you would with the Alexa, uh, you can give commands through the eyepiece and you can say switch palettes, start recording, stop recording, zoom in, zoom out, many different uh, capabilities uh, which you have with this eyepiece. It also allows for better, better versatility so you can hold the camera where usually you would hold the camera with two hands. Now you can move the camera around, you can place it on a tripod, walk away, you can hold it in different uh, levels, you can hold it with one hand and reach hard, hard to uh, how, how, reach hard to, to reach places. Uh, so this is something that we've just added recently. Uh, in addition, this is available uh, right now. In addition, we've added the IC Gas app. So this is the official app, very similar to the eyepiece. You can control the camera from your phone or the laptop by downloading the app. Uh, you stream the camera to the app using the hotspot of the camera, uh, connecting Wi-Fi to the camera. You can change color palettes, uh, move, zoom in and out, capture images. You can share the images quickly via SMS, WhatsApp, email, any way you choose to do it. Uh, you can download the app either on a tablet 
or on your phone. Right now, the app is available for Android. We're working for uh, on iOS as well, and we're hoping to have it very soon. The IC Gas Mini is the, our on-cooled camera. Unfortunately, I don't have many updates to add to this, so it's still uh, in the standard way it was before. We are working on improving this product. Uh, I won't get into too many details right now uh, on the improvements that we're gonna uh, that we're planning on on making. It's a cost-effective camera. Uh, it's much more cost-effective than the IC Gas 2.0, but you need to keep in mind that it's limited to methane. Uh, because it's uncooled and usually medium to large concentrations. Uh, if we're speaking about the IC gas detecting 0.35 grams per an hour, here we're talking about approximately 10 grams per an hour. Um, it's got thermography also built in GPS, and uh, we have a feature for those of you who know our IC gas 2.0. Well, so we have uh, the sensitivity feature here we have the enhanced the enhanced mode feature sorry so here we have uh, automatic gas detection uh, which is virtually coloring the plume on top of visible mode we want to uh, discuss a little bit also where we're going with the 24 7 but i'll let ram get into that a little bit okay i'm back so um uh... About three or four years ago, people uh, lines started asking about fixed cameras you know, over facilities, and we we play around with the uncooled and cooled camera. But and we we uh, eventually decided that uh, the cool camera is better suited for fixed camera to cover large areas so we installed our uncooled uh, our cool camera the mware camera this is our uh, older version of the camera uh, we we set it up over a tank farm and we uh, detected a lot of uh, we just scan around uh, in different presets and, and try to see if we can see if the computer automatically can see these leaks and, and we used AI and uh, other algorithms to try to detect. And we actually detected a lot of gases, uh, a lot of re release events, uh, emission events. But uh, when we come to, to our client and ask them, uh, tell them and show them, and most of them were real emission events. They ask us, is it, is it uh, large, small, intermediate? And it was very hard to quantify because it was, you know, it's really dependent on the atmospheric conditions. It depended of if the leak was uh, close to the camera, far away to the camera, and so many other conditions. So uh, we actually didn't know uh, all of these uh, events uh, are they are significant to our client or not. So we had to think back and go back to the ske sketching board and think what is the objective of a 24 7 fixed ogi camera when we go so we we try to answer these four questions we want to know when you have an emission event we want to know that it's really the gas and not something else like steam dust or anything that is moving in the background or clouds so we, we really want to to know uh, if it's a, uh, if it's a true emission, then we want to know where it's coming from. This is where the OGI camera imagery can really tell you where it's coming from. And you want to quantify. You want to know if this emission event is above a threshold level in emission rate. And so you want to know how much when you do this in order to set off an alarm. So. We, we realized that the current approach that we used in this uh, installation and most of our uh, competitors are using, just moving around the camera with the pen and tilt and trying to find leaks in long distances, it's very challenging uh, because of atmospheric conditions and distance and some big leaks from far, uh, far away cannot be visible in a different time of the day where small leaks in close range will be seen 
very well and be thought like significant. So we went back to the sketching board and we tried to design a new system and we changed, we had a, a significant change in our approach. And so we designed, you can see this, uh, I can show, go back for, no, this is our new camera. It's sitting on a pen and tilt. And, and it actually, it's a system that has three cameras in it. And it's sitting on a pen and tilt and it's designed to cover the whole site. So we essentially trying to cover with few cameras, much fewer cameras than the previous approach, the whole sites on the perimeter. We're trying to see if any gases are crossing the fence line of this uh, interrogated site. And uh, we trying to do it with some uh, high confidence. And we're trying using three cameras, we can rule out false positive very easily. So we have very little. So only when we 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 know that uh, a certain concentration or flux crossing our fence lines, boundaries of the site, only then we set off an alarm. So this system will set off an alarm knowing that there is a leak uh, inside this area. Once it set off the alarm of a leak, it uh, used some wind data and meteorological data, uh, temperature, humidity, and all kind of other data, and trying for a while to do some kind of triangulation to, to define the area where the leak coming from. And then it rotates the cameras. If you have one camera or two cameras or three cameras per site, it will rotate all cameras to the area and start trying to find the, the release from there. And then it used the imagery to really say which tank from different angles, which tank is uh, emitting the event that we already know that is above uh, a certain threshold. And we try and during all of this data collection throughout the event, try to to define how much was the event that leaving that site. So this is a totally different approach. It's a, a measurement approach. We are more into measuring concentration along the fence line using the camera and then trying to image the plume to see where it's coming from and measure uh, the, the flux that crossing uh, the boundaries of the site. So this is the approach and we are in, in the midst of uh, finalizing this product and doing pilots all around the world. Uh, our first pilot is in South Korea and uh, I'm trying to show, there is some kind of animation. We call it the bubble. We, we measure on the fence line and once we have a release, we're trying to move the cameras to the areas and pinpoint the emission event. Okay, so this is, uh, okay, I'm trying to move. So before we go into our uh, advancements uh, or, or features and, and future direction with the QOGI software, what we call the IC site software, I would like to give you again a short scientific point, uh, scientific uh, background on how we do our concept, uh, our quantification. So, as I explained before, with the CL concentration lengths that we can measure when we measure the relative contrast and we can convert it for each compound, we can convert it to concentrate measured concentration, integrated concentration which is the product of concentration time, the width of the plume, or we could, uh, once we do this, we can uh, do this at each pixel. So we can have a line of pixel downwind from, from the leak, from the emission event. And once we have concentration in each of these line of pixel, it's like define a plane because it's a integration of lines, define an area, a plane, and we can integrate this integrated plane, integrated concentration 
And we have in our software a way also to evaluate or estimate the wind speed, the flow of the plume by looking at the correlation or the movement of the plume from the source outwards in the image, in the video. So once we have concentration and plane area and wind speed, we multiply all of them and we get the mass flow leak rate. And there is a small unit analysis here. Uh, we'll move, uh, we get, for example, we get it a gram per hour. The area is meter square. The, the concentration is in gram per cubic meter and we multiply by meter per second. And we, we if we want to convert it, we multiply by 3,600 seconds per hour. We can get the result in gram per hour, and but we can provide this in a volumetric flow rate and uh, and uh, and uh, mass flow rate, but also we can provide PPM. We our software also give the PPM values, not just PPM and PPM meters values. So we can. This is an intermediate intermediate calculation, but we can do also provide it in our software. So. Just a second, no. Sorry. Time to show the movie. OK, so our IC side QGI software. Uh, is a tablet that wirelessly connected to to our IC gas 2.0 camera. Once you detect a leak, you take out the tablet, you put the camera on a tripod. It's very important. The, uh, the quantification cannot be done on your end. It needs to be stable on the tripod. You aim the camera to the leak uh, with your coloring feature in the tablet, and then you go through few with uh, through a uh, few several uh, screens of wizard and you can fill in you know the wind speed category temperature of the air and all kind of uh, and distance and you press enter and you 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 get the quantification in one minute you can also uh, do the analysis, post analysis on your tablet with data that you collected with the tablet. But as Elon mentioned earlier, you can also use just the camera in the field, collect these files that can be analyzed. These are not simple videos, it's a special uh, video files that you can collect. It's called QGI feature. You collect it, you put all the information, all the screens, the air temperature, the distance, the wind spin category, and the compound, you put it inside the camera with the pull down menu, and you collect it in the field, and you can do post analysis uh, in the camera. I will go through a few of the, on the side here, we have, uh, colorization. yeah, we have the colorization, I'm sorry. Uh, we have the colorization feature that helps you how to to aim the camera into the right place. There is ki some kind of guidance inside the software where to put it either in the bottom or the top of the image. You do it on the tripod, then you go through distance, air temperature, compound. And right now there is a, a short list of compound that the user can define for himself, which which compounds are relevant to the survey? You can have up to six, but you can uh, define this for a much longer list of compounds that we provide to the user. And uh, if you need some other compounds that are not in our master list of compounds, we can provide it uh, upon request. So you put all of these and you do save and it will save the data and then you generate a report, a war document report, an Excel report with all the information of the quantification. And you can see over here, you have a leak rate and it's report the uncertainty in leak rate, but also you have the max concentration in PPM. It's also provide the maximum concentration uh, in a circle around the leak. OK, during this one minute of measurement. 
So a year ago, more than a year ago, we participated in our first uh, comparison study in Europe, GERG, which is the gas research group, European Union gas research group. And there are 10 technologies that participated, not just OGI, only three OGI technologies, but 10 technologies uh, from LIDAR, TDL, drones, helicopters, uh, big events, uh, tracer release, uh, bagging, all kind of uh, technologies. Out of the 10, uh, we were ranked uh, around four. All of these technology in uh, in in the in the generation of the right uh, leak rate, this was a blind test. But out of the three OGI, uh, we were the best. And there is a graph that is taken from their website. It's the GERG news section. You can find it over there. And if somebody wants, we can provide the link to their. And there will be. Uh, Soon they will publish a peer review paper on this study with all the results and all the names of the companies. Right now, the names of the company are not released, but uh, we we had uh, 70 type of releases and we reported 14 out of these 17. <laughs> and our, our results were the best out of the OGI technology, so QOGI software. In the near future, we are planning on the IC site. We okay. Uh, okay. In the near future, we had a. There was supposed to be a picture there, but it's not showing. Okay. <laughs> it didn't upload okay but uh, we are we we are planning we are working on improving accuracy uh, through improving the uh, the wind assessment in the algorithm we we making changes to the wind assessments and therefore uh, as i explained earlier it's very important uh, okay okay it's it's very important to have right wind speed in order to get the right uh, mass flow or volumetric flow d determination f through the software. A uh, couple of months ago, we, we participated in another blind study and we figured out that our one minute measurement is too long and we can shorten the data collection and analysis to 10 to 20 seconds, depending on distance. So we will do this in the near future. We also will add a feature that we can grade, give a grade to the scene delta T in order to optimize the sighting of the camera to do the data collection and analysis of the quantification. And we have plans in the short term to add concentration and quantification features into the IC gas 2.0 and uh, another thing that the picture that is missing we are going to put the IC gas or our uh, cool camera on a drone and do survey and we are planning to develop a quantification a QGI from drone for this uh, application so these are as far as uh, quantification these are the development for the near future one thing that Ram uh, forgot to mention in the picture, unfortunately, that didn't show up would have showed that, uh, is that we're not just creating a camera, an OJ camera from a drone, but actually a system that that will quantify as well from the drone. Um, so this is going to be in the very near future and we'll update once that's released. So. For those of you who don't know or don't work with Obgal, Obgal is a very business, uh, is a very customer oriented company. And the way we, you know, we work with our partners and our customers, uh, when we up there, when we up there our products is by taking their feedback. So we believe that uh, while performing elder inspections, although it's not yet uh, required by regulators, uh, knowing the intensity of the leak will improve 
the operator operator inspection uh, experience. So saying that the way we the way to get there is for Gal to allow all of its customers uh, the ability to use the most complete set of tools. So we're actually uh, very excited to offer IC side QOGI to all of our uh, customers who will purchase an IC guys camera uh, free of charge. So anyone who will purchase an IC gas camera from now on will also receive the IC side free of charge. Uh, and that'll really enable everyone to have all these features um, and all these products in, in one system. And that's uh, basically as you guys like as you said, no, yeah. okay. that's basically what uh, you know that's 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 our our mini major announcement that we're excited apart from that that we're adding uh, features to the camera and uh, the drone camera as well is that all of our customers uh, starting now will be able to enjoy the IC side free of charge. So that's that's about. That's about it. Is there anything else you wanted to add? No, I'm ready for the questions. So we have we have quite a few questions here. Let's see, we'll start. Uh, we don't have much time. We really have five minutes, so we'll have to run quickly through the questions. Does Ogun have any data to share with us? Uh, for Delta T concentration related to being able to see the gas with the ICS camera. Yeah, uh, I can answer this uh, question very fast. If you see in the presentation, there is a graph for different compounds of sensitivity versus Delta T, both in concentration. We can provide any of these questions that we will not answer. You can approach us and we'll answer. We'll provide all the information we have. A lot of graphs and on on sensitivity, both in ppm meters, ppms, and and in gram per hour or pounds per hour or any units that you would like. We can provide it as a function of delta t distance, atmospheric conditions. We will be very happy to share it with you. Okay, this one, this one is from Andrew. Does Ogal have a response ratio? We'll share that with them as well. Yeah, the the the, the response factor uh, is meeting the appendix K. We just hope that it will not be in the appendix K in the future. We don't think it's it's useful uh, criteria. Criteria. Does it show concentrations? Uh, that's when we said uh, in our last slide that we are planning to add quantification to the camera. It will show in the near future concentration on the camera. Okay. Can you quantify leak rate with, from flare venting or plumes with different gases, CO2 and unburnt uh, methane? Theoretically, yes, but it's uh, not yet developed. How to dis distinguish easier water vapor from VOCs? Uh, OGI does not distinguish any gases, but uh, the water vapor, OGI technology looking at the temporal contrast and water vapor is actually static in the atmosphere. So what we are doing is when we looking at short range and long range ranges, we look at the fluctuations of the gas and the water vapor just reduce the temperature of the background and just reduce the cap the delta T and therefore the sensitivity of the camera, but it's not really interfering with identifying the gas. So the question about uh, 17 grams per an hour, we answered. Is there training on how to use the IC gas 2.0? Absolutely. We offer trainings through our distributors. Um, you can contact us for more details. I want to say something about the 17 grams per hour. You cannot say a, a, a limit or a requirement without a set of conditions. The EPA said five degrees, one, two meters, and calm winds. So I don't know what is the conditions to see 70 gram per hour in, in Europe, but in these conditions, we can see less than 0.1 per hour. Elon mentioned earlier 
that 0.35, this is in much harder condition than the EPA, but in the conditions of the EPA, we can see less than 0.1 per hour. Gram per hour. Okay, will you be including humidity factor when creating an operating envelope for appendix K? Humidity is not important for, for short range in appendix K. It's not a fact. Appendix K is not about quantification, just detection. So if you're talking about humidity as water vapor, that's one thing. The other thing is the steam. But you can see steam with your eyes. So you know when the camera sees steam and you see it with your eyes or visible camera, you know it's not a gas. But if you don't see anything and you see the gas, you know it's a gas. Appendix K is only about detection, it's not about quantification. Can I see gas 2.0 measure carbon monoxide, nitric oxide? Okay, uh, 2.0 cannot measure these compounds. But uh, 2.0, we have a special camera. There's, there's another camera 2.0 special for these compounds. Uh, for it's the carbon monoxide and the chlorofluorocarbons, uh, some of them you can see. Actually, we can see the HFC, the, but uh, more, we can see in the mini, we can see the refrigerants, the chlorofluorocarbons. We can see them in, with the uncool camera in the long wave IR. Okay, is the Google glasses like intrinsically safe? Uh, they're intrinsically safe, Roy. Um, let's see, can the IC gas app produce standardized report or data analytics? So that the app doesn't produce a report, but the IC side produces a report and you can adjust the report and add your template to it, uh, standardize it, standardize it according to your company standards. It's an OGI technology cannot speciate right now. Maybe in the future we'll have something that could do some uh, speciation, but right now it's not speciating. Uh, this is the question, is mass emission rate speciated for VOCs? No, but you, you always calculate the mass emission rate as methane. If you have natural gas and most of it is methane, you'll do it as methane. If you know what is your mixture, you'll take the majority of the mixture and if it's a C4, you do it as butane. If it's C5, you do it as pentane. And so, so just, just to say that we're we're past our time, but we'll continue to answer questions. So everyone is welcome to stay stay while we're answering the questions. And uh, we understand if you need to leave. So I'll just say quickly, thank you for everyone uh, who's leaving right now. We appreciate taking the time. You can contact us anytime, obviously, for more details. But we'll stay to continue to answer the questions. Uh, if you're not in a rush to leave. So the next question, how much fixed OGI cameras are used to cover a typical natural gas plant? Uh, like Ram mentions, with our new, new, new system, we're trying to minimize uh, to, to the smallest number possible, but it's very hard to say how many cameras. Uh, we need to probably better understand the plant before we can answer that question. Uh, but, but if you... We can we can measure up to one kilometer on one side with one camera, so we can move it from one side to another. We can have like a, a one kilometer to each side, so you can imagine. Um, it really depends what are the detection requirement of the site. So if they are more stringent, we maybe will be limited to three hundred meters or so. Okay. Do you assume ground level wind speed is the same as the wind speed at elevated elevated locations where leaks or where leaks or ventings occur? Or use wind speed from a local weather service? As I mentioned, we, we put wind speed category in the IC site and the IC site do an adjustment by looking at the plume movement from the source outward outwards. So we we adjust the wind speed as we see it uh, in the in, in the video. So if it's moving faster on on elevated venting, uh, we would see it in the camera and adjust the calculation of the quantification. How does wind speed affect the camera and tablet? Can you incorporate values that you consider, or are they fixed values that the tablet itself gives you? 
So I, I think I answer that we, we just it's wind speed is very important for quantification for the mass flow, not for the concentration. Now uh, we put wind speed category. We have three categories: calm, intermediate, and strong, and uh, moderate and strong. And once the camera is just justify in between these three categories. But uh, as I said, one of the improve the near future improvement will be in the wind speed calculation because it's really critical for accurate uh, uh, quantification. The mass flow con for concentration, it's not so critical. Uh, OK, a little self-advertisement about Charm, the helicopter-based LIDAR, sy LIDAR system. Uh, finished best with GERG. Yes, like Ram mentioned, we didn't finish best of all products. We finished best of OGI products. Um, but yeah, we know that that came uh, the best. But there's also a price, a big, a big price difference that we need to, we need to, between using a helicopter and using a handheld uh, QOGI tablet. It, it, it they are both useful uh, but that, uh, but, but technologies. You know, but you're right that they can complement each other for sure. What measurement range does the tablet have? What? measurement range so if you're assuming how far the tablet doesn't have measurement if you're assuming how far you can use the tablet from the camera it depends on the location if you're asking about how far the camera can be from the point that you're trying to detect uh we say a couple of meters two two to five meters yeah it, from, it, the, from the from the, the from the the wi-fi range i you know about 20 yards is is it really depends with obstruction, but uh, the optimized three to five meters, the optimized, you can use it. We used it up to 70, in the curve, we used it up to 75 meters. And and we knew that in this range, we are underestimating. Actually, in our report, our results, we knew ahead of time that we will underestimate and we really underestimated because of the range. But usually the optimal up to 10, 15 meters beyond that will start underestimating the leak rates. How far are you from the OGI 2.0 with the quantification software included? If you're referring to the slide uh, with, up, with the updates that are coming, uh, what ne fair to say? I think we, we're aiming the next firmware upgrade, so we're talking about a few months. Uh, what recommendations do you have for the training requirements in the Pendix K? Uh, I think I think uh, it's there are a lot of publications on 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 the impact of uh, user operator training, and uh, I can direct you to, to how many hours until. There is a difference between well-trained and well-experienced user to uh, beginners. So uh, they just see more leaks because they are more experienced with OGI in general. So I I think I, we don't have specific comments. I think Appendix K took into consideration the first version of Appendix K. There were, were a lot of comments, but the new version uh, dealt very well with the training. She made the changes. Okay, Paul is asking the IC side software, or is the you're talking about the free software uh, or tablet or just the software? So we're talking about the software for post analysis. Uh, David, I see that you have answered your question uh, about the uncooled fix. So, like I mentioned, also we are looking to update our uncooled system, and that includes uh, the fixed as well. Cost for handheld also with tablet for concentration. So uh, costing, you can contact us and we'll be happy to provide you with costing. And as I mentioned before, uh, the IC site software uh, for post analysis is free and uh, we'll, be, we'll be happy to, to provide you uh, more information if you contact us uh, afterwards by email uh, at info at opgal.com. You supply a copy of the presentation. Yeah, we'll have a copy uploaded to our LinkedIn page as well as YouTube uh, of this webinar uh, probably within the next couple of days. The plumes 
which do not cross the fence due to low wind speed may go undetected. Mm -hmm. How do you address this? Uh, eventually, there will be wind and they will cross. You know, you cannot have, when we say 24 7, 365, uh, in the other approach, you have uh, sunset, there are conditions, there are a lot of windows that you cannot see. You have no conditions to see the leak. So eventually, uh, uh, when event starts, the wind will come and they will hit the fence line. So it will maybe not be detected uh, for environmental perspective, not detected in the first hour when it started, but after a while it will reach the fence line. That's the whole point of fence line monitoring, that you're trying to, when you do things uh, with visits, it sort of depends uh, when you visit, but when you do 24-7, you you if you don't catch it in the first hour or the first day you catch it on the second day because you you'll measure it much soon, sooner any other approach what is the minimum concentration for the emission plume to appear on the camera so like we mentioned uh the minimum concentration detectable with the ic gas 2.0 is 0 0.35 uh, grams per an hour but of course uh this is in inside in, in very good conditions if you're outside there's many conditions that are dependent on the on the detection, like wind, uh, temperature, and so on. So it's very hard to uh, to give an exact uh, exact rate. But generally, uh, 0.35 grams per hour. We, we have published a paper on an envelope of performance, considering distance and wind speed, and and uh, Actually, Appendix K require the users or the vendors to, for each camera, to develop an envelope of operation that include all of these conditions and uh, that they can see these uh, criteria flow rates. So uh, it's really OGI technology is really depend on on this uh, distance. And wind speed and delta T. By the way, when when customers purchase cameras and they get the training, this is all a part of the training as well to understand uh, where to place the camera. This this comes, of course, with experience, but you get uh, training as well. What? When you get a camera, it takes you about one hour and you can use it. The training in Appendix K talks about to be well trained. A user, you need to be an experience, and it takes more to be to discover these small leaks that they require under Appendix A. But it, the camera is very user friendly, and uh, you can operate it almost immediately when you open it. Very simple. What uh, Roy is saying, interesting comment. Appendix K seems to be a QOGI protocol, not OGI protocol. I think that we we have similar uh, similar thoughts, and we we talked about it also when we met in. Uh, yeah, but 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 it is OGI protocol. It's all about detection, not not the QOGI. No, the way it was written, he's mentioning. Yeah. Uh, your uncertainty does the tablet. What uncertainty does the tablet have? Uh, in general, in in uh, control conditions, we have reached to 20, 25 degrees. In in GERG, we are we were uh, about 50 percent plus minus 50 percent, uh, but it really depends. I I I've been in uh, tough last month in December, very cold. We had very, very small delta T, like the, the background and the air was almost essentially the same. We still see the, 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 the leak, but quantification is very hard. So the rule of thumb, if you want to get a, a good uh, and good uh, quantification with low uncertainty, you need to have a good delta T, calm winds, and, and, uh, and that's why we're adding the feature of evaluate or grading before you start the quantification and try to optimize the scene to get the best quantification. 
but this is the we're working on it. It's a quantification is a very challenging task with OGI, but it's uh, making huge strides. OK, what are the plans with the mini? Uh, so the plans with the mini right now uh, is to, you know, uncool technology is very difficult. Um, when you're detecting in difficult, let's say more difficult weather conditions compared to cool technology. So this is uh, this is the plans to improve it so it can be used in uh, more difficult conditions uh, with a better Delta T. And uh, right now, those are the challenges with the uncooled cameras. How much does the camera and tablet cost? Uh, like we said, please contact us and uh, we'll be happy to provide you with uh, pricing information. Uh, thank you, thank you. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, we have another oh, one more here. Here we go. Does it measure the leak rate uh, of the gas mixture in natural gas processing plant, or it needs to be calibrated for one of the gases in the mixture? It's a good question. Okay, this is a, a one of our plans. If you if you could put it will take you you need to assign it to the major uh, component of the mixture and so it quantified as this mixture but if you have the mixture we can provide a feature we are planning to provide it. we missed it in our future plans we'll provide a feature once you put the mixtures we'll break it down the relative uh, uh, leak rate of each of the components but right now you take the if it's a uh, 80%, 85% methane, you, you quantify it as methane. So it's it increased the uncertainty of the uncertainty, but you can adjust how much methane in the release by putting in the, you can correct it by putting in the mixture, the, the non-mixture. But as I said before, the camera cannot do speciation right now. Okay, so this is the last question. Does the camera measure wind speed or this needs to be done separately? No, the camera doesn't measure wind speed. You need to place, uh, I'm assuming you're talking about the IC side quantification, you need to place the wind speed. You, you need, uh, I, I need to say, you need to put the category and it will adjust it. It will not measure from scratch, but it will play, it will improve and justify the wind speed once you put the category in. Okay, so that's it. Thank you very much. If anyone has any other questions, please feel free to contact us anytime. We're happy to offer answers and uh, give you any advice that you need. So thank you and uh, we'll be in touch. Bye bye.